I start with a simple shape that I can work on getting the proportions correct, but also this pilaster because next to it are the four rectangular windows and window panes. And there again, a simple shape to really work hard at getting the proportions correct. And from there, I can keep the rest of the drawing in proportion. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. If you've watched any videos of my drawing, you'll see that I always like to start by choosing an area of quite simple geometric shapes where I can work really hard at getting those proportions correct and then use them to reference the rest of the drawing as I grow it out from around this starting point. Let's see how it goes. Now it's important to get these perpendicular lines adequately drawn because they reflect the stepping back of various levels from the, the wall surface of the window. So, and that's obviously very important in creating a nice three-dimensional effect. So we need to make sure we include enough and really skimping on those really creates a, a much shallower cartoon effect than what we're really after. So we'll do that. Notice how with the curved lines at the top of the window, I don't fuss too much about drawing those lines exactly. I'm really after creating the effect, but I certainly want to make sure that there's enough lines there to give that stepped back feel to that whole top arched window part. So now we'll progress the drawing with the rest of the, the line work that we're going to do around the columns that frame our window on each side. And look, the important thing here is to think of edges as having thickness and not just to be tempted to draw too many edges as a straight line. I mean, sometimes a straight line is the best uh, way to draw them, but, but most things actually have a thickness and the more often we can reflect that thickness, the better. We're gonna do the balustrade now. So we're moving closer to have a look at drawing the balusters on this decorative balustrade that's under the window. These balusters often cause problems for people. And look, how I draw them depends on how close I am to them. This is probably the most detail I ever do, but I'm still being pretty loose with it. I'm just still trying to draw the effect. As you can see, I'm as much drawing the spaces between the balusters as I am anything else, and I rely on shadow particularly to help define them. So these are all things I deal with in other videos, of course, but uh, I like the effect it gives. So now we just finish the last few lines uh, that we want to have just to define a bit more around our windows and then we're ready for the tone. Well now we're ready to head into the tone work but this is also a good time to hit the like button if you've found this helpful so far even to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm starting using a Copic N6 marker and I'm being very careful with these dark shadowed areas of the interior behind the window panes. It's really important to try and get these edges as sharp as possible because it means so much for the finished work if we do. So now having established the darker tones, we work backwards from that. I'm using an N4 and N3 for some darker areas in the, in the shadows where the window sits back, but basically I'm using an N2 for the, the general wall, exterior wall shadow. And then for that white timber framing of the actual window, I'm using an N0. The distinction doesn't show up as great on the camera, but it does create a much lighter effect. And I allow for shadows, even though what's casting them isn't here. And that's pretty much it. Well, I hope that was helpful. Drawing complex windows really is pretty much the same as drawing simple windows, just more. We want to make sure we create a lovely three-dimensional effect. We really want to make sure that where the windows sit back from the wall, that we allow enough lines to really push them back in depth. Where they have parts of their, their framing or their decoration where they come forward from the wall, again, we want to make sure we allow enough depth in our line work to create that to happen. And then we can add tone to reinforce the effect that our lines have already given, and sometimes even to correct the effect that our lines are already given. Look, hope that's really been helpful. So keep drawing and I'll see you next time. Bye.